Hey everyone out there, welcome to the show this week. We're super thrilled to have this three piece on for you from Nashville. They've released one hell of a debut rock and roll record. They just happen to be in Vancouver on the night of its release. Coming up, you'll see their first ever video interview. They played a fantastic set, three great guys. This is episode 143 of In It to Spin It with Music Band. So we'll start the show off with parcel time here. This package actually coming from Infinity Cat. It arrived the day that uh, the interview took place at the rickshaw. It is indeed the Dead Soft Flexi single. Dead Soft, of course, from Vancouver. Really nice of Infinity Cat to include a little message here. Pretty cool getting that personalized. This uh, is called The Wind. Little flexi that I'm sure was fast tracked uh, just so they had something going on for South by Southwest for fans. Pretty cool song. Uh, Jordan Coop recorded this on Gabriola. Nice little Vancouver Nashville connection here to start off the show. So here is the debut record from Music Band called Wake Up Laughing. In the upcoming interview, we'll talk all about album design, uh, who did the liner notes, who they shot the cover with, the plants, everything. They had 100% artistic creative freedom with this. They didn't ha ever have to submit anything for approval. It's pretty cool of Infinity Cat to just trust them with it. This is the pre-order version. I ordered it two months ago in February. Uh, there's only a hundred of these on buttercream, uh, the color of the vinyl, which the band did choose also. I think more labels should do these really limited pressings. It's cool. Uh, you get a bag of money seeds as well as a little incentive. You can grow your own plant. But uh, learn all about this record in the upcoming interview. A uh, really great album. Here we go. Talking with Music Band, their own words. Here we are. Very excited to be here at the Rickshaw Theatre in Vancouver on a special day for a band coming out of Nashville on their debut record release day. Say hi to everybody out there. Hello. Guys. Hey. Hi. Hello. Lee, Hello Duncan, today. Duncan, Harry. Hello today. For Music Band. That's right. The yes. impossible name to find. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, Googling is a nightmare. Uh, right on. Uh, I mean, congrats. This is fucking great to be here with you guys. Uh, you. How does it feel? First of all, you, one of you told me downstairs, long time coming. Uh, debut album is yeah, out sure. there in the world now. It feels evening. like a holiday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a birthday or something. Just yeah. uh, well, under underlying good feeling. Yeah, you wake up and you're excited, but you can't really figure out why. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh yeah, our album comes out. This is, I don't know, it kind of just represents our lives, the past two years of our lives, uh, how we've grown, what we've been through. It's very personal, uh, and it's kind of like our first really serious thing that we're showing the world, the world, and not, and like kind of looking outside of Nashville which has been our home and kind of been a huge part in shaping us. Uh, this is like the object and the material that we're kind of like, this is who we are and this is what we sound like. Yeah, it's and sincere. That's it's awesome. Definitely, it's gotta be sincere. It's not like ironic or apathetic or anything. Like we tried really fucking hard to make a good record. And you did. It's amazing. It's an incredible you. record. Thank you. Let's talk about the album. 
album, man. It's a uh, wake up laughing. Uh, it's a tremendous offering, pure rock and roll. Uh, it gets a little trippy in the middle with uh, I think it's called Rog, the yeah. two parter. Uh, great stuff, man. It's super excited, adrenaline packed. Uh, picture myself in a car hitting all green lights, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the way the album ends with those two two part songs. Um, one thing that uh, I listen to a lot of music, and this lyric slapped me in the face, I swear, when I heard it, so I gotta ask you, I take it to you. Uh, There's something so awful deep in my mind, can't stop thinking which of my friends will be the next to die. That's some heavy yeah. stuff on the track, Keep Living. Uh, what's going on on that one, musically and lyrically? That was, that's actually the oldest song on the record. Okay. Like, um, Interesting. And that, I mean, personally, writing that, I think, kind of came out of a time uh, where death was just surrounding me. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of just like a, a uh, bit of a wake up call in terms of like people in your life and letting people how, know how much you, they mean to you. And um, it's sort of just a reality check of yeah. like, uh, it's not something that uh, uh, is all, all you know ever present on my mind. Like who's gonna die? Yeah, no, it's just a but really I, striking. Lyric. I think that's that's a kind of sentiment that I kind of strive for. I yeah. I, I I wish that there were more things on that record that kind of um, explicitly. Uh, Kind of just look you in the face yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, oh, it keeps the listener engaged and definitely perked my ears up because it was like, whoa, holy shit. I was telling Brandon that everybody at a time in their life gets to that point. Yeah. Like everybody will feel that way. Yeah. At some point, so I think that it'll be a song that everybody can relate to as I, well. I, yeah, I think it's a you know big thing about like part of becoming an adult is like it's true. you get to an age where you know, people's parents die, people's, your friends, people yeah. die. Yeah. And uh, it's not a secret and it's, it's <laughs> something that you should think about. It's not yeah. bad to think about that. Part of growing up for sure, man. Not everything's all roses when you're all a kid and everyone's mm -hmm. here with you. But let's not talk about death on this magical <laughs> release day. <laughs> Getting down, maybe that wasn't the best fucking lyric no, to bring out no, right away. Yeah, <laughs> so which song uh, you guys recorded at the Bomb Shelter? Yeah. Uh, awesome place, I've heard. Clear Plastic Mask, uh, name dropped that as well. Um, yeah. Everybody who records there feels like a sense of loyalty, I think, just because yeah. like it's a world-class recording studio made affordable by the graces of Andrea, who runs it. Yeah. So it's like an, the ultimate resource for a musician. Cool. I think everybody that records there feels really grateful. Yeah, and well, the people I've met have spoken highly of it. Uh, what song gave you the most difficulty to record? And, uh, oh, I definitely know. Still, okay, yeah, yeah immediately I'm scared know. too. It's good. The last song on the album, Scared, scared yeah. Music Part 2, is yeah. a tough one. Um, is it something? Because that one got written while you were out of town, right, Lee? Yeah. And so I ended up playing. Uh, uh, drums on a demo that me and Harry made at home while Lee was out of town, like right before we went to the studio. Yeah. It was like, let's definitely put this on the record, it's really good, but like we'll see, you know, we only have five days to record, so I might end up just doing it again for the sake of time. Yeah. So I played drums on it, and of course, since I'm not the drummer in the band, I screwed up and I played it a little bit too slow, but we had already recorded everything on top of it, and we kind of were listening back and we're like, you know, this is not doing song justice. After we, well, we, we played it, it on a tour. Yeah, oh, that's and it right. Kind of was like the, allowed it to like become. Right, its right. Own started game. breathing. Yeah, so we we came back to town to mix it, and we we're like, listen, we gotta re-record this. And he's like, dude, so we don't have time. Like, if you really want to do that, it's gonna eat into mixing time for sure. And so what we ended up doing uh, was kind of an old school technique: is we just <laughs> sped the Manual. recording up manually on the tape machine, no, play sure. back uh, a half step higher. Nice. And you, know, you can hear it. You know, yeah. On the track, you can hear it change and get like kind of ramp up. Yeah, Scare of Music it's like some 1 to Scare of Music 2. The transition is us literally pitch bending the tape machine up. And then when it hits, it has 
not only the original track, but another drum track that Lee recorded. So it's both me and Lee playing drum sets on it. And then Harry doubled his pitch bent vocals with another vocal take. And wow. then the ending of the song, we were actually planning on having all the Diary of Planet guys play guitar solos one after another on the ending, but it didn't work out. Yeah. So we took a bunch of like public domain sound effects and put and just totally blew the track out with compression and yeah. had just a lot of fun with it and stopped yes. thinking of it as like a serious like how we're we gonna make this song good and we're just like how can we make this song crazy and just yeah. stupid and be like the <laughs> ultimate like, ending of the album. Yeah, good you know, album. It just throws a over. bunch as much yeah. shit yeah. into it at the end as we can so, take up all the tracks yeah. <laughs> and just turn it into this. In like, terms of production, it's like the heaviest production on the album, but it's oh. not to make it cool, it's to make it like totally it's like over the stressful. top. It's like yeah. it, well I mean I have the image seared into my brain of like sitting next to where Andre was mixing and then Harry and Duncan on the couch and I'm just like sitting there with like a smile on my face <laughs> and then I look over at Harry and he's just like I was, he just like couldn't take it all in. It was like the perfect example of being taken out of my comfort zone I was like, with yes. like a producer yeah. where he was doing something he's like, just just trust me. Wow. I'm sitting there listening to this song come together and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> just like total mindfuck. Yeah. So that's just one song. Like, so that, that was, was a lot of work. Blast. That was kind of the hardest one to record yeah. just because like it was so fresh. Like we had just demoed it before we went to the studio. And we figured we would figure it, the song out through the recording process, yeah. but like most of the album we recorded everything live, so like the song was figured out by the time we had done the take and it was like too late a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well definitely something cool to listen for on the last track yeah, of the yeah, record. Definitely. You can't um, <laughs> I'm interested in this. Let's talk um, we can talk let's talk artwork. You guys are on the cover oh, there sure. with a bunch of plants. Uh, the, the album's Wake Up Laughing. Maybe talk about the meaning to you guys if you want and the cover artwork how'd you come up with that okay yeah wake up laughing that's a that's a lyric from one of the songs in the album yeah and we we combed through the lyrics for the entire album searching for something appropriate and we just felt like that embodied you know our our characters Spirits, yeah yeah uh, okay. just starting the day with a smile on your face yeah and but it's it, you know like a really literal sense like if you've ever waked up if you've ever woken up <laughs> laughing yeah. it's like a very strange experience and uh, <laughs> yeah. I it's like the most incredible thing the best way to like start your day interesting uh, I've never done that now mark wise game. though our who, whose concept was it was it Sammy's concept it was, it was something that I had thought of and I was working on like a I was working on a t-shirt design with our faces and a bunch of plants around them that was like taken pretty like similarly from there. There's a greatest hits of the Beach Boys record yeah. called Endless Summer. Endless Summer. And yeah, it's all okay. their faces kind of through yeah. the plants. And I was like, that would be so cool to do something like that, a drawing like that. So I got everybody's face and I did it. And then I uh, ended up telling Harry about it. And he went and had a meeting with our friend Semi, so who did the actual picture. And her and uh, our, our partner, Rex, uh, just kind of worked it all together. Yeah. And she, like we we talked to Semi about this kind of basic idea, and she was like, "Shut up! Yeah, I, know. I know exactly what to do." Yeah. And like we went to this nursery, arranged all these plants and stuff. And she was like, "I just I'm not going to show you any other pictures. I'm going to choose one. Just trust me. I, I know exactly what you guys want." And she showed us one picture. Yeah, like, I think this is the one where you're like, okay, yeah, it's amazing. I did yeah. uh, Rex, uh, Rex Runyon did all the layout, the design, yeah. uh, he did the back, like, the text, just yeah. everything I just else. started, I haven't really had a chance yeah. to take it all in, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a story that I'm I think four times I only got 
Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck on uh, the tour and stuff. Thank you. Know? you. Yeah, we'll uh, see you uh, out there, I guess. Yeah, okay, maybe, look, maybe you can zoom in, dance off. I don't know. Uh, we got to do one picture for oh, the, yeah. uh, the hype film. Oh, sure. I like how you see.